everybody. Welcome back. It is Thursday night, and you're here for another episode of, well, it's Thursday, so it's like must-see live stream, right? It's like must-see TV, but it's not TV. It's a uh, live stream. Welcome back to it. I uh, hope you're all doing well. We have a fantastic guest for you tonight. Uh, I mean, this can this week get any funnier? We have funny lady Julie Halston. She's done like 147 Broadway shows. Tootsie, uh, if you caught her in Tootsie, then that's really all I need to say. Fantastic performance. She played a producer, and she was hysterical. Nailed it. On the town, you can't take it with you. Anything goes hairspray. A ton of shows, ton of television, all that stuff. As usual, I'm going so fast. Mary Dina can't keep up with me in terms of the graphics. I'm outpacing her. Sometimes I'm just going to go super fast. She's done this show, this show, this show, this show. Just to watch Mary. You can't see her, but I can see Mary trying to like do this behind me. And she's like, it makes her sweat. It's it's really fun for me, not for her. Anyway, we'll bring Julie on in a few minutes. Uh, thanks so much to you for all being here alive. Uh, and all of you watching on the replay, I forget. We get, the crazy thing is, is because of Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg's crazy algorithm, we get thousands of views on this sucker. And a lot of them happen after the fact. So for all of you watching on replay, I'm gonna say two things. One, thank you. And two, it is just because it's a replay, it's not too late to donate to the Actress Fund. The tip jar still works on the repeats, okay? So throw some cash in there. Uh, you can't throw stars at us if it's a replay, but do give a little to the Actress Fund. It will go a long way. Speaking of replays, I'm still uh, cracking up from last night. Rob McClure was on. Who saw Rob? Anyone see Rob? Oh, look, we, we got some real Julie Halston fans already. Look at this. We got some Charles Bush love already, um, all sorts of stuff. So uh, Rob McClure, we talked about his conductor cam last night. He released a new episode today, today, and it is very, very funny, very funny. So go check that out. Uh, what else to talk about? Shetler Studios. So I don't know if how many people um, watching tonight are in the biz, um, but if you're in the biz, if you're an actor, if you're a producer or writer, then most likely at some point you have auditioned or held auditions at Shetler Studios, and they announced today that they were going out of business after 30 years, unfortunate casualty of the coronavirus. So what this says is, listen, if this is a small business, and Broadway is made up of small businesses, so if you can support a small business, whether it's on Broadway or whether it's in your own neighborhood. I saw someone say they went to a pet store today, try to support the small businesses out there. The big ones, most of those big corporations, they're gonna be just fine. The small ones are the ones we got to worry about after this, uh, local restaurants, that kind of thing. So do patronize them if you can. Uh, what else? I wrote a blog about um, coming back to the theater. And yesterday, um, we also held a virtual meetup. Oh, there's the blog. See, I'm already speeding past Mary. Can't keep up. She's sweating. I wrote a blog about how returning to the theater is not going to be just about marketing. It's about creating habits. Uh, because the habit of theater going is a little bit busted for most people. And we have to create that habit again. If that interests you, and once again, I'm looking for ideas on how to do this, and I'm going to take them all up to the, on the committees that I'm a part of. If you're looking for habits, uh, if you're looking for, uh, or if you have ideas, God, talking too fast. If you're looking for ideas, maybe I should not have had seven cups of coffee today. There's a note for tomorrow. If you can't, if you can see, can you see in this back, in this screen, right below my name? Mary, take away my name. Can you take away my name? She can't take away my name. Right? I'll, I'll just show you. I'll just show you. This, this is a carry machine or a curry machine or however you say it. Is it Swedish? I literally have one of those in my office so I can just Zoom and drink coffee, and I had too many today. Um, so I'm going to ta stop talking now and bring on our guest. Please welcome to the live stream, Ms. Julie Holston. Welcome, Julie. Hey! How oh my you? God, you were like a speed freak. I know, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm always fast, but today I'm just like a mile a minute. Yeah, you really are. I'm happy to be here though. But listen, we need to talk about how we're gonna get the theater back. I've got some ideas. Bring them. It's, I've you, got some ideas. it's just you on stage every night and every show that will get everybody back. Well, that's one thing because, you know, I, I, I am the doyen of the one woman show and that's real talk about social distancing. 
Um, so, you know, I can always do a one woman show. I really do think though that can, I've been reading Albert Poland's book, Stages. Oh, yeah. And I've worked with Albert uh, as a general manager because, you know, I started in Off-Broadway with Charles Bush. And I'm just wondering if perhaps regional theaters and also Off-Broadway theaters, if they can reconfigure in a way, uh, that might actually be a little bit of a start of theater. Mm -hmm. I don't think tourists are going to be flocking anytime soon. But I do think New Yorkers will start, do you know what I mean, coming back sooner than tourists, obviously. And I've already heard like Barrington Stage has reconfigured their stage and they're going to have performances in the summer. Billy Stritch and Hampton Calloway are going to be doing their shows. And certainly one person shows or two people uh, can still be done. And I do think New Yorkers will go out there and be supportive. It might be an interesting time to be a cabaret space, a club, instead of, do you know what I mean? Having tons of people, they may have to reconfigure their economics, but I do think it's gonna be very tough for Broadway theaters. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote about this a little bit ago that I thought Off-Broadway would come back first. Yes. Um, off-Broadway has been very challenged over the last several years. So this could be what we- This could be the time. Yeah. This could be the time when somebody says, you know what? I'm going to spend $30, $35, to, to, you know? And uh, so, but we need, the, we need the content. But I think that that's already happening. And like I said, they'll, there's certainly people like myself, like a lot of- um, one woman, one man, or, you know, the sort of Mike Birbiglia's, myself, lots of people who do uh, one person shows, uh, stand up, whatnot, that's gonna, people will want to see that. And I think funny and, and uh, you know, uh, interesting plays or whatnot. Certainly, you know, people are writing things already about the pandemic. Um, so yeah. I do think you're right. And I think that might be something very interesting. And, you know, Charles and I started off, broad we started at Crack Den. It wasn't even off Broadway. It was, it was off, off, off. I mean, it, it was a Crack Den. And that's where we started. I don't know if we want to bring that back. <laughs> I'm not so sure on that. Next week, um, Julie Halston at the Crack Den. It's a good crack name. Den. It's Listen, a good name it gave me a state. career. It gave me a career. I know it was terrible for the city and it was terrible, but it did give me a career. Um, but, you know, I, I do think off-Broadway, I think uh, certain um, cabaret spaces, they're going to reconfigure. And I do think New Yorkers will come out. But... Broadway has is really challenged. It's going to be a real time of not doing anything until perhaps social distancing is really over or unless we get some vaccine, you know. And have so. you, I mean, you lend yourself well to so many different types of shows, big musicals, one person, television. Have you been doing anything like this? Have you been doing any content? Oh, I've been doing a million things. I've um, never been so busy for no money. <laughs> I, I, I'm exhausted, Ken. I'm exhausted. I, I've done play readings. I've done workshops. I've do, I'm also creating my own show called Virtual Halston, which is going to launch on May 22nd. I'm just plugging, you know, myself. Because, um, you know, people loved my comedy clips. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing my own little show and um, Jim Caruso is going to produce it. And Ruby Lochnar is going to be my technical person. And BT Whitehill, who is the theater in limbo set designer, has already designed some really fun graphics for us. So um, yeah, I've never been so busy in my life for, for no money. But, you know, the fact is, uh, and as you can see, Ken, full hair and makeup. Yeah, I'm very impressed. I do it every day. And this is the thing. People out there, I know you're sitting in your robes and your sweatpants and whatever. Terrible idea. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. This is the thing. You got to get up. It's important to exercise. 
Uh, I know everyone's drinking a lot of wine, myself included. I, I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm not. Um, but I'm exercising every day. Uh, it's important to wear your mask, of course, if you go outside. But hair and makeup. I don't care if anyone sees you. Right now, the cats are the only people who see this hair and makeup, and you right now, and the audience. It's important to keep up appearances. Mm -hmm. I think glamour is important. You know, I'm deeply shallow, Ken. You know that about me. <laughs> I'm deeply it's shallow. It's one of the things I love about you. Well, but this is the thing. Deeply shallow, you know, it's true artifice. It's authentic <laughs> artifice. An authentic artifice is true. Okay, uh, am I wrong? I'm not wrong. We're in the theater. So I think it's important to keep up appearances. I really do. And and I and I also think it just helps your mood. And and it's important because people are going crazy now. You know, people's, you know, you're getting bored, you're getting very restless. Um, I think people are getting very sad, particularly people in our business. And I, and I totally understand that, you know, for those of us who love the theater, the idea of not communicating with an audience right there, uh, as I said on NPR recently, you know, it's a molecular feeling when mm -hmm. you have a, an audience washing over you and we're all doing this now virtually. Uh, but I think this presents opportunities for us. I mean, quite frankly, Ken, I love sitting here talking to you. I, oh. I, I feel like a connection. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not quite the same as when you walk on a Broadway stage and, you know, 1,200 people are cheering for you. But the fact is, when that really does happen again, can you imagine how exciting oh. that's going to be? We will all be crying. We will all be thrilled and whatever. But we have to understand that it's going to change the economics too. And maybe what we'll see is, you know, certainly... Salaries will be different. Uh, people, I suspect, will opt out and say, you know what, I'm going to retire. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, people will say, uh, now is the time for me to retire and whatnot. But I think, listen, it's been going on for thousands of years, the theater. Do we really think this is the death knell of live theater forever? Yeah. I don't think so. I suspect even, <laughs> even if Broadway, even if every Broadway producer in the world said, we're not coming back, I suspect somewhere in a little amphitheater, somewhere maybe in the Bronx <laughs> or, or Queen, somewhere a little amphitheater, somebody's gonna stand up there and declaim <laughs> and people are gonna stand around and listen. You can't kill theater. You just can't. Do me a favor. Yes. Please, when you announce, when you do your show. Yes. Do not do it at 8 o'clock when I'm doing mine. Because no. No. Do you no do your more. show every day? Every day. We've now started to take weekends off, but we're doing it every day. But I can't compete with this. I mean, this art, artificial artifice. Yeah, I mean, I can't do Darling, it's, my show will be at the cocktail hour at five o'clock. Don't worry. Okay, there you go. And it's no, only no, no. weekly, darling. It's only weekly. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not nearly as ambitious as you are, Ken. You, you're unbelievable. You're yeah, doing well, this every day. That's fantastic. Well, it takes my like forty. We are forty. Episode forty-one. Forty-one shows equals like a half of something you can do, which is why. I, and it's great yeah. that you're, you're the tip jar. The tip jar. Actors fund. Actors fund. Good. I mean, thank you for that. Yeah. Tell me, um, what were you doing when it happened? Like, where were you when? Oh, I okay. Well, I was uh, very fortunate in many ways. Well, first of all, okay, Tootsie closed in January, and of course, very, very sad about that. But I was actually also very, very busy putting together my big charity event, which is Broadway Belts for Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation, which was. Um, the disease my husband ultimately did pass away from. So I'm a big fundraiser for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. And we had this incredible lineup, Bernadette Peters and, and was our big star. And it was to honor Daryl Roth, who was a big patron of um, the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. So we had in this incredible event planned 
February 24th, it was the last big Broadway event before everything shut down. So we had our event at the Edison Ballroom, and then I did a workshop with Kristen Chenoweth um, of, what? of um, the Brownie Wise Project, which is about the woman who really, really put Tupperware on the map. Huh. And it's a great little wonderful new musical, Joe Kinesian uh, and um, uh, Bla uh, Blair, uh, I, I know Joe, uh, it's a musical. And, uh, and um, uh, we did that workshop and Scott Ellis was the, our director. Oh, uh, we had an incredible cast. Um, Mike McGraw from Tootsie was also part of it. And literally we finished that workshop, everything closed down. Literally like the next day we heard everything had shut down. And we had heard also, I guess, about the usher. There was right. an usher that was tested positive. And then boom, everything shut down. So I literally, the two big things that I had to do, I was able to do before everything shut down. So, and I was very grateful for that. Um, so, and then it was done. And then that was it. I mean, and immediately the Tootsie cast, you know, got on to Zoom and had a big cocktail party. <laughs> seems to be a recurring thing. It is, it's a very uh, recurring kind of thing. Um, someone but, has uh, an idea yeah. for the name. I know you're calling it the vir virtual Halston show, but uh, Karen Johnson here thinks you should just call it Drinks with Julie. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that happens all the time. <laughs> But thank you, thank you, thank you. But anyway, it was it was really great that we were able to achieve what we were able to achieve. And I think that um, the Brownie Wise Project will hopefully um, come back because it's really a worthy project. Uh, and um, we'll see, you know. But uh, it, it's been very painful for people, obviously, uh, to suddenly not be able to do what they've been doing but also people are very, you know, frightened about being sick and whatnot. And of course, we keep hearing on, on the TV and radio about, you know, people that are vulnerable and they keep bringing up age. And of course, I don't like that at all. I keep saying, why do they keep talking about age? Um, but anyway, uh, I, I, I try to remain bitter free. Um, but, you know, it's been hard on our business and of course, you know, I mean, the story of Nick Cordero, which of course is a national story, although apparently good news today. Yeah. Apparently there, there's progress. So, um, but this has been very, very, uh, very hard on on those of us who are in the, the live theater business. And, um, but I think what's fantastic is, you know, leave it to New Yorkers and leave it to theater people to come up with, exciting, interesting ways to do things. I mean, to be quite honest, I don't really need to hear someone else sing something from Les Mis at all. I don't, you know what I mean? I, no, not that I don't love all your voices, but I just don't need to see another one of those, you know, but- well, uh, About the, you said you did some online workshops and some readings and things. Have you enjoyed that? How have they gone? Any like, major technical flaws, anyone flushed a toilet or anything like that? Like yeah, no, no major technical problems. Um, we did a reading of uh, The Divine Sister, the Charles Bush, very, very funny show that we did uh, years ago. That was a big hit at the Soho Playhouse. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I was very skeptical at first about how this was gonna go, but it really did go well and people really enjoyed it. But now here's the thing, Charles is such a funny writer and the, the, the script is so strong that people just even hearing it and seeing us coming up, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not having to perform it, perform it was, was good. I suspect there are certain plays that will not lend itself doing this mm -hmm. kind of format. What would be the worst player musical to do on a Zoom? 
Well, great. maybe a pin to play. <laughs> maybe a pin to play. T too many pauses. Yeah, exactly. Everyone a lot of pauses. And a lot of people might be thinking, wait, is that a technical problem? Or are they pausing? And 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 also, it seems a little depressing. Or like uh, why are people so unhappy? I think a pin to play might not be best for StreamYard. Um, but, you know, and also anything quite physical. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. The regard of flight might not be able to be done in this format. We might not be able to see Bill Irwin do his genius whatever his genius, you know, physical, physical um, machinations are. But a really strong script, particularly with Charles, where he has, you know, so much funny material, it really did go over. And um, they were able to, because it's a cast of what, seven or eight, and, and we could, they, they were able to manipulate us to zoom us in, as it were, uh, well, so that that went well. I have to but say, it's a real art. Like that, that's a job that will be created as a result of this. The stage manager running the Zoom, like bringing people on, bring that's a, there's a career right there for anyone who can do that. That's oh, hard. absolutely. And the kids, you know, the kids listen to me. <clears throat> I sound like you know Ruta Lee or something. People are gonna go, who's that? Um, Joan Rivers. I mean, they don't know who Joan Rivers is, but. You know, the kids have already figured it out. They're already on it. They 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 love playing with the different platforms. So it's gonna it's I think you're absolutely right. It's kind of like the early days of television. You know, I almost feel like we're doing Playhouse 90 here, and ultimately, um somebody's gonna come up with, you know, a terrific show. It might be this show. Um and well, and not be a show. well, what whatever. Well, I, I appreciate the thought. Yeah, but you know what I mean. You're right, though. People are going to get sophisticated. They're going to figure it all out. And there's a kid right now, he or she in their rooms, figuring out how to make this all better. And um, I mean, let me tell you something. I don't mind this because I haven't botoxed <laughs> in months, and. It's very disturbing, Ken. Again, <laughs> shallow. So, so I have that sort of ghosty light because I don't mind that it washes everything out. Um, all the lines are gone. Do you know about the Zoom feature that, like, oh, yes. your experience, your appearance? The like, yes, yes. And, like it'll Botox your face for you. Yes, but you know what? It's it's. I've tried it. It's it's not it's not quite as good as you. you know. they, that, that's where that kid, she or he in their bedroom, they could make a better filter. I wonder how many people have called like the state house and been like, "Are you kidding me? My Botoxer is an essential business. This is it. They have to open up like tomorrow." I, I don't. I cannot believe you said that because let me tell you something. I almost did, but. Because I, what my argument was going to be was that I am a performer and that I needed it. However, because the theater and t TV industry is completely on lockdown now, I didn't think I could get away with that argument. Um, but believe me, once TV starts up again, I'm going to try. I I'm going to try. Uh, here's what I think you should do. Yeah. You, uh, you should come up with a character that would actually make that argument on the phone, leave a voicemail, and like do that on virtual Halston. We'll all tune in. The crazy okay. like, all right, that's a good idea. who's trying to beg the governor to open up her plastic surgeon so or her dermatologist so she gets a Botox. Yeah, that's a good idea. And you know, I can say, you know, darling, I, I am a Cuomosexual. You know, <laughs> everyone's a Cuomosexual now. Everyone all everyone wants to marry Cuomo. Well, I've so got a man crush on it myself. Like yeah, I, yes, you know, yes. Yeah. I can, I can, I can say, as a homosexual, I am begging you to. That's a very good idea, actually. You know, like crank anchors, but but I'm serious. I mean, I really am serious, and I think it is rather essential. Um, anyway, so that's that's you know that's what I've been working on. But the thing that's great though, Ken, is that it also brings up a big discussion about theater 
and how we're we're it'll be interesting to see what people will want to see. Yeah. I'll I'll be curious to know. What do you think? I mean I I, I meant it. It's I think they're gonna want to see you. I mean, they're going to want to just be delighted and be filled with joy and energy and laughter. But I'm I'm doing a little research on this. So we're yes. I'm gonna write a blog in the next couple of weeks. We're just assembling the data now. Okay, of, good. Of the shows that opened after like right after recessions or frankly Vietnam, like all these things to see if mm -hmm. there was a trend, like in what shows did well to see if the, what I call the Mamma Mia factor, because after 9-11, Mamma Mia had like just opened and got like this great review and everyone was like, what the, how did that get a, this is ridiculous. But of course it was 9-11, it's what we needed. I think Ben Brantley called it like a Twinkie. Like we just like, sometimes we need a Twinkie or a bag of Oreos like I binge ate the other day. Yeah. So I think, I think they're gonna want, you they're gonna want okay. trouble laughter they're gonna want all that stuff so. i'm fine i'll be a hostess cupcake <laughs> i'll be that i'll be you know and i and i and i do think that what will be good too is um you know people who will be able to be funny but also you know uh be able to really connect with an audience do, do you know what i mean because People are going to want. They're 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 going to be so uh, hungry to. Uh, it, it won't be. It, listen, I don't think Medea no. will be catching on. Do you know what I mean? I just I just, I don't see that. I don't see Medea. I don't see a lot of um, uh, dark Greek plays. You know, I, 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 Antigone. We'll we'll put that aside for a little while. Um, do you have yeah. anything that lined up that you're supposed to do that you're like, oh God, I really, I hope this gets over quickly by a certain time. Anything, yeah. new, wait, something you can tell us? Wait, what are you saying? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Do you have something in the wings, like waiting in the future that you're scheduled to do that you're oh. crossing your fingers? That oh, that well, you actually, um, you know, one of the other things that was uh, being worked on was the new Robert Horn. Um, oh, right. The, the Hee Haw musical. The Hee Haw musical. Were you, were you doing that? I did a, a, a character in that. And um, there was all sorts of talk about what we were going to do. And it was actually, I think, scheduled to go into the national yeah. in, um, in, in the summer. But that obviously is not happening uh, right now. But so that was something that was actually being worked on. And um, yeah, but you know, Robert being both a TV and theater person, he is an attorney winner. Um, he is being courted by everyone. I mean, he is being courted theater wise, he's being courted TV wise. He's he's never been busier actually, um, so we'll see what happens. You know, as you know, Ken, it, things happen. You do workshops, you do uh, readings and whatnot, and you 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 do it and like you do it like two or three times, and and you go, oh oh, this is going to happen, and then the next thing you know, they go, oh, that's pushed off for a year, and then the year comes, nobody's doing that. And then three years later, it comes. Do you know how this goes? Timing is everything, and um, it's it's God only knows. But that was what we that was something we were working on. You have a dream role that you'd like to play. Anything that uh, you haven't done yet? Well, you know, when I was when I was younger, I thought I was going to be a great dramatic actress. I wanted to play all the big roles like Hedda Gabla. Can you imagine me as Hedda Gabla? Actually, they would be very good. I think they'd be very funny. Why not make it a little funny? Why can't Ibsen be a little funny? Sure. Yeah. Ibsen. I loved all those those you know those very Nordic, you know, suicidal Nordic types. I thought you that was great. you could do Pinter. That's right. I could do Pinter. I could you know. Yeah. So the pausing will be difficult for me because I'm always trying to fill in the gap. Um, but I, I really, really thought I was going to be this great dramatic actress. Well, joke of jokes. I studied at the Terry Schreiber studio 
uh, here in town many, many years ago. And Terry Shriver was the one who came up to me and said, I think you're a terrific actress, comedically. I think you should really, really look into comedy. And I was like, comedy? I, you know, comedy was like so, it, that was considered, you know, kind of sh shallow, shallow by me in my head. Oh, I just, of course, as we all know, comedy is so hard, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, dying is, is easy, comedy is hard. Um, but I did, I took his advice and um, I, I, I'm, I was grateful. I was very, very grateful. So um, I actually think my dream role and my, my late husband always said this to me. He said, your, your greatest role is Julie Halston hmm. and you should be Julie Halston. And so that's why in a way, again, I think this terrible time, this terrible, awful time, will afford me a very interesting time for myself because I'm hoping to really do a lot more of Julie Halston. Do you know I, what I mean? I, I love it. And when you, that is one of the most, I think, insightful things I've ever heard about, like advice to a performer. And I love that it came from your husband because it's so much about bringing yourself to a part instead of trying to make it artificial. You joke about that, of course. Tell me about your, then a bit about your process about finding each one of these characters and the humor within them. Well, honestly, and it's very, uh, I guess it's very British in a sense. I'm not a method person. Uh, and a lot of it came from when I was working with Charles Bush and we had our theater company, Theater in Limbo. Uh, so much of what Charles would write would come out of what he really wanted to wear. <laughs> I mean, to, to be very honest, you know, um, it all came out of a persona and, a, and an image. And to be honest, uh, I have that similar thing, which is I get an image in my mind and a hat can do it or a, or a coat. It's very, um, it's from the outside in for me. It is not from the inside out. Uh, however, you know, I'm definitely of the learn your lines and don't bump into the furniture school of acting. But I also know that whenever I put on the physical characteristics of a character, it's naturally going to come from who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always going to be able to bring Julie Halston to whatever that is, whether it's my voice or even a, a different kind of voice. That's why when there's an understudy on, you know, when an understudy goes on for, for a play or in a, in, a, in a play, it's never good to try to create your own creation. It, it, the rhythms of a piece are established. It's always important for an understudy to try to not throw the other actors and to try to uh, keep the same kind of rhythm particularly in a comedy that the other performer had. They're always, I know this is hard because I have understudied. You're so afraid of not bringing what you bring to a piece. You will naturally bring something different to the piece because you're a different person, but you don't want to throw your fellow actors under the bus or throw them so completely by doing something so completely different than what the established actor or actress has already done. Does that make sense? Totally. It's very, I mean, Jerry Zach's really, right. I'm a Jerry Zach's kind of person, you know, um, in that when I understudied for um, the wonderful Gene Smart, mm -hmm when I played Lorraine Sheldon in um, The Man Who Came to Dinner, he, he said to me, he said, look, you're gonna bring what you bring, but we have to keep a lot of those same rhythms. And let's face it, when it's, it's something as brilliant as The Man Who Came to Dinner, those rhythms are built in anyway. You don't wanna change them. They're brilliant rhythms. Um, I just love that you're like this Superman comedian like you put on a cape and it's like there you go you can fly i just love the idea and terry craniter says you should do a one-woman show as joan rivers well i'm not going to say any 
say anything about this because you are. I'm not going to say anything about this. This uh, this has been proposed to me. So, but thank you. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But really? this is something that may be in the works. That is amazing. And that, like, I will buy a ticket right now if you put them on sale. So All right. uh, I would love to see it. Uh, you said comedy is so hard. Well, frankly, you make it look so, so easy. And every time I see you on stage and every time I'm in a room with you, whether that's a Zoom room or whether that's a little, I just, I have so much fun and I'm filled with such joy. And I know everyone here was tonight as well. So thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you. I thank love you. it. I think it's great. And I love that you're doing this every night. I'm so impressed. I am I would have a breakdown yes. if you are doing it. It's because I get to chat with people like you. So thanks for Thank being here. We'll see you soon. Julie Halston, everybody. That about does it. And Julie Halston as Joan Rivers. I mean, look, we're breaking like exclusive Broadway news now here on the Producers Perspective Live. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow when Ashley Park joins us from Mean Girls. That's right, Ashley Park from Mean Girls tomorrow night. Who knows? Maybe she's going to announce she's going to play Governor Cuomo in a one woman show about Governor Cuomo. So you never know. It could it could be announced tomorrow. So make sure you check it out uh, and do if you enjoyed tonight's uh, tonight's performance, because really, we just saw a show. Let's face it. Uh, if you enjoyed tonight's interview, if you enjoyed tonight's experience, whatever you want to call it with Julie Halston, please do us a favor right now. Two things. One, throw some money in the Actors Fund tip jar. Two, give a little hearts and thumbs up and likes and do all that stuff and share and all that stuff that Mark Zuckerberg wants you to do because it'll spread the word about this much sooner. Come on, I can see those likes and those those hearts. So let me see a few more so you can spread the word about Julie and everything that she does. Tune into her show on May 25th. Don't forget, you can watch all our replays. Uh, if you are watching on a replay, then you know this. If you're not, if you're watching live, look at all those amazing people you can check out. So please do check them out. Go to my Facebook page, click on the videos button. I will be back tomorrow. I'm going to try to slow down and not speak as fast. I will try to have less coffee tomorrow, but I can't guarantee it because sometimes in a pandemic, it's whatever gets you through the day. And if you have to have seven cups of coffee, 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 coffee. You can do it. Uh, now, something to make you smile. Oh, this is something from uh, one of my own shows. So the closing cast of Alter Boys in 2010, uh, they have a little group. They, they call this Alter Boys to Men. They took one of the songs from the show. The, sh the song is actually called The Calling, but it's got this as its uh, hook lyric. Jesus called me on my cell phone. This is um, one of my favorite songs in the show. This was the first musical I ever produced, um, ran for five years. Uh, and I think, speaking of getting the band back together, I think I'm going to get that band back together. I think we're going to do an Alter Boys reunion right here on the live stream. So what do you think? Is that a good idea? Let me know. If it's not, I won't do it. But if you hate it, if you're like, Ken, don't, don't do that. Just get Julie Halston back. We'll do that. But if you want to hear from the Alter Boys cast, let me know. I'll try and gather that band and get them back together. But in the meantime, go to theproducersperspective.com backslash smile and check out The Calling or Jesus Called Me on My Cell Phone. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I had a blast. Who could not talk to Julie Halston? And I had a blast reading all of your comments. So thanks for being here. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay home. See you tomorrow. Get the band back together.